Hi, it's Matt from Haltech, and today on Technically Speaking, we're going to walk through some of the updates to the new IC7 Dash software. So firstly, thank you all so much for getting on board with the IC7, and thanks for the feedback, because these suggestions have allowed us to deliver quite a few new features with this software release. So let's check things out and see what's new. Now the first thing you want to do is uninstall any existing copies of the ICC software from your laptop. Next, of course, you want to grab the latest version of ICC from the download section of the Howtech website, the latest software downloaded and installed, double click on the ICC software icon to run the software. So first, press the load defaults button. Now you can connect the USB cable to the back of your IC7, click on the update firmware button. Now this process can take up to a minute to complete. So once your Dash hardware has been updated to the latest firmware and the splash screens come back up, we'll take a look at these new features. This screen looks familiar. On the left, you have the predefined Dash layouts, the alarms and the settings. You'll notice that some additional menus are under the Dash settings heading. This version of ICC software adds colors, buttons and brightness to the Dash setting menu. We'll get to these in just a moment, but first, let's go back to the Dash screen menu. One common question that we've received is, can I change the order that my dash scrolls through each screen? So we've added the ability for you to do just this. Simply grab onto the screen name you want to move, move it up or down the list. This reorders the scrolling sequence. And once you've sent this new configuration to your dash, it'll be applied. Now, in addition to simply being able to reorder your screen layouts, you can also now rename them. You can remove screen layouts and you can also duplicate them. So now you can actually have more screen layouts. So to rename a layout, simply click on the name you want to change and type your new text into the text box. Duplicating or deleting layouts is a matter of right clicking the screen you want to modify and selecting either remove or duplicate. The same right click function is available in the alarms menu for removing and duplicating alarms. To set a new alarm, just simply click into the alarms menu and select Add alarm. In the dash settings heading, under the display units, nothing's changed, with the exception for those who are particularly astute of the addition of an odometer unit. That's because the updated version of the ICC software, we've added an odometer function with two independent resettable trip meters. So now you can program things like service intervals directly into the IC7. For the odometer to work, you will need to have a vehicle speed input going into your ECU. The ECU then transmits the vehicle speed via CAN to your dash. If you click on the system menu, you'll see that you can enter a starting value for the odometer here, as well as choose to reset or not reset the two trip meters. It's worth noting that you can, if you choose, set up one of the dash buttons to reset the trip meter as well. So for our workshop customers, you might want to set up one of the trip meters as a service interval that can't be reset with a button as a reminder for the customer to bring the vehicle back to the workshop for an oil change or a checkup or for any other reason at a predefined distance. Now the other trip meter is resettable on a button for measuring things like fuel consumption or as a trip meter or whatever. The choice is yours. So let me show you how to do that right now. So with this latest software update, we can now reassign the functionality of each of the IC7 buttons. And in doing so, we've also updated the speed at which the buttons react to a key press. So everything happens just that little bit quicker now. So to change a button function, go to the button icon that you want to change, click on the drop down menu and select the function that you'd like that button to perform. Simple. Now in my case of the trip meters, I'd like to set my trip one meter as a button resettable trip meter that I'll use to keep track of the distance I've traveled since I last put fuel into the car, which means I need a way to reset the trip meter by pressing a button. So in this case, I'm going to use a long press of the X button to reset my trip meter one. To set up my engine service reminder, I'm going to go into the alarms menu, add a new alarm, select the channel trip meter two, I'm going to give it a name, a service interval, and set the threshold value at which, in this case, I'm going to use 10,000 kilometers, and then I want to have a message that says service engine soon. I'll set the background warning color to green, click apply, and just to see how this looks, I'm going to pop down into one of the screen layouts, select trip two as a channel I'm displaying, and I'm going to simulate the trip going over 10,000 kilometers. There you go. I get a service engine soon warning. It's worth noting, I can clear this alarm by pressing the X button because that's my clear alarm button, 
but unlike trip meter one, I can't reset this trip two with a long press of that button. So next time I get into the car, I'll turn on the ignition, I'll get the service engine soon message again. I have to connect to the IC7 software, go into the systems menu and click reset of trip two to clear this one. Now I'm going to remove trip meter two from my display now because I don't really want to see it here. The trip meter doesn't need to be on display for an alarm setting to be signed to it. Instead, I will display trip one, the button resettable trip meter. And because I know my fuel sender is a bit dodgy in this car, I'm actually going to set up the trip meter to go red when I get to 425 kilometers. And I know from experience that gives me about 75 kilometers before I'm stuck on the motorway without any fuel. Speaking of fuel level, if you've got your vehicle's fuel level sender wired into the ECU, the ECU is able to broadcast this level to the dash via CAN as well. So you'll be able to see exactly how much fuel you have left in your tank. Now there's two more major features that have been added to this version of the ICC software. Colors and brightness. Let's start with colors. It's now possible to define your color palette for each individual screen layout so you can have your gauges match your Fuchsia Velour interior. So to adjust your color palette, click on the color menu and you'll notice there's a color palette for each screen layout. And there's a daytime and a nighttime version variation for every gauge element. Now I'll give you a brief overview of how this works and then it's probably worth you just pausing the video, downloading the software and going and having a go at it yourself. A brief rundown of how each screen layout is constructed. Each layout consists of a combination of bar gauges, circular gauges, numbers or numeric gauges and a background color. So let's start with the bar gauge elements. On the Howtech Hero 1 screen, these bars around the outside here, they're bar gauges. And you can see each bar has five colored elements, a background, a label, a gauge value, a gauge value background, and a warning color. Now, I like orange, so I'm gonna make myself an orange version of this screen. On my circular gauges, I'm gonna change the face color, but I actually think I'll leave the rest alone because I'm happy with how these numeric gauges are being white. Now my best advice here is to play around with a few colors and combinations until you're happy with what you have, and then save that file. You can change your color palette of each and every one of your gauges to your heart's content to create a totally customized look for your car. Now there's two complete sets of color palettes available to you for each screen layout, a daytime mode and a nighttime mode. So if you want, you could actually set your screen layouts to be yellow and black during the day when it's bright out and pink and purple at night when it's not. It's up to you, no judgment. The IC7 uses the headlight input on the 34 pin connector to determine nighttime mode from daytime mode. So when the headlights are on, it's obviously nighttime. When the headlights are off, it's daytime. Now the last addition to this version of the ICC that I want to show you is the increased backlight control panel. You now have full control over the screen brightness settings and the steps in the brightness control between button presses. So to access the brightness control panel, click on the dash settings, the brightness. Each brightness level has its own separate setting that you can scroll through using the up and down brightness buttons on the front of the dash. The default brightness level in both daytime and nighttime mode is set by ticking the appropriate radio button. So here in daytime mode, I want the dash to always start up and run at 90% brightness by default and drop down to 25% brightness when I turn the headlights on. I can still adjust the brightness manually by using the up and down brightness control buttons on the front of the dash, but the IC7 will always use these values as my default startup brightnesses. Now if I click on auto brightness control rather than just having a fixed backlight brightness level for each level, I've got a range of brightness levels that I can program from minimum to maximum at each brightness level setting. This range of brightnesses corresponds to an input value from the ambient light sensor on the front of the dash here. So in this case, when I'm on brightness level one and the input from the ambient light sensor is 10 ambient light units, then the brightness level of the dash of the backlighting is set to zero. At the other end of the scale, if the input from the ambient light sensor is all the way at the top of my scale, in this case, 120 ambient light units is as bright as the environment ever gets. Then the maximum brightness at level one is 10%. The reality is in auto mode, you should only ever need to have one, perhaps two brightness settings because the light sensor brightens and dims the screen for you. This frees the possibility 
for those up and down buttons to be reassigned for other functions, as we discussed earlier. To really set up your ambient light sensor control well, I'd suggest, at least temporarily, bringing up the ambient light sensor channel on one of your display pages so you can see for your specific dash location install how much light gets into the sensor under full daylight conditions and how much gets in there under nighttime conditions. This varies quite a lot based on the depth that you have your dash installed into the dash panel. The deeper it is, the less light gets into the ambient sensor. Being able to view this channel will give you a good idea of what range to plug into the ambient light control level on the brightness display. Basically, the ambient light level your dash sees at night with a minimum value. And the number you see during daytime will be your maximum value. And there you go, you're set, you're ready to go. So we've covered a lot in this video. And now you guys have got some homework to do because I wanna see what wild and interesting color schemes you all come up with. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to comment below or reach out to us on social media, email, or even an old fashioned phone call. Well, as always, thanks for watching. I'm Matt from Haltech, and I'll see you next time.